Hello. I've spoken in a previous talk about the value of physical activity for children, how being active can help kids to develop. I noticed a, a trending topic on Twitter the other day, uh, hashtag imagination, and a poster on that hashtag caught my eye, so I thought I'd talk about that today. <clears throat> it's broadly speaking a claim that free and easy access to culture and the arts helps children to develop. An organisation called the Cultural Learning Alliance, or CLA, is behind all of this, and they've provided quite a bit of evidence to support their claims. Uh, I'll begin by explaining what the Cultural Learning Alliance is, then look at the evidence they provide. Finally, I think I'd like to have a bit of a rant about primary years education in the UK. So, firstly, the CLA is an organisation that works to help children and young people to gain meaningful access to cultural activities like museums and galleries, and the arts like playing music, stage performance, acting, dancing and such like, and painting and things like that. The basic claim is that these sorts of activi activities are life-enhancing, they improve us as people, and they bring not just fun and enjoyment, but also teach self-expression and make us feel a part of society. The CLA makes ten claims about how involvement in the arts and culture can improve child development. Um, I'll run through these for you. Uh, number one is um, participation in structured arts activities can increase cognitive abilities by 17%. Number two, learning through arts and culture can improve attainment in maths and English. So all sounds good so far. Number three, learning through arts and culture develops skills and behaviours that lead children to do better in school. Four, students from low-income families who take part in arts activities at school are three times more likely to get a degree. Now, it's fairly common knowledge that in the UK, children from low-income families rarely go on to university after school. And number five, employability of students who study art subjects is higher and they are more likely to stay in employment. That's a very interesting one because there's a lot of discussion about the value of um, arts-based subjects as opposed to the sort of economics and business subjects. Number six, students from low-income families who engage in arts at school are twice as likely to volunteer. So they're twice as likely to do unpaid work to help in their community. Number seven, students from low-income families who engage in the arts at school are 20% more likely to vote as young adults. Uh, that might not seem important, but uh, voter turnout in elections is notoriously low nowadays. Um, so the results of any election are perhaps not uh, an honest appraisal of where people see the politics. Uh, number eight, young offenders who take part in arts activities are 18% less likely to re-offend. So kids who have fallen off the rails and got into trouble, um, if they take part in activities, they're less likely to fall off the rails again, so they'll be better behaved as a result of uh, being involved in arts activities. Uh, number nine, when children take part in arts activities in the home during their early years, so perhaps ages one to four, they are apparently ahead in reading and maths at age nine. And the last one, people who take part in arts are 38% more likely to report good health. So I think that's this sort of well-being um, thing where people who are doing things they enjoy, doing things that they find worthwhile, are less stressed and they get better health. Now I think all this is excellent and certainly 
a good reason for children and young people to get more involved in culture and the arts. But I do see a problem or two. Like with many things, if you, as a parent or a teacher, force the children in your care to take part in these things, they may not like it. If that's the case, they may resent going to the music school or wherever. If my family goes to uh, museums or galleries, I have to say the kids are not that interested. They're far more interested in a trip to McDonald's afterwards. Um, an example, in school last year, my younger son played the part of a chicken in the school play. All he had to do was dress as a chicken. No speaking, just sitting on the stage. He was one of three chickens and some other kids were dressed as cows. As a parent, I have to question whether this sort of arts activity is going to help him develop. Um, mm. My older son plays guitar and uh, has performed a couple of songs on stage with a group of fellow musicians. I can certainly see the value of that. A further point I'd like to add here is the large amount of research into learning languages at young ages. Uh, for children, it's not only a useful skill and more easily acquired at a young age, but also good for their overall development, just like the arts and culture. Now, it's fairly common knowledge that British people are not good at learning foreign languages. I did a couple of years at French at secondary school, uh, used it a little in France as a teenager. I'm afraid I don't remember very much now. My eldest son learns Spanish at school one hour a week. What's the point of that? One hour a week. He may as well not bother for all of the use one hour will do him. So we have two things that are shown to help children develop. Getting involved in arts and cultural activities and secondly learning languages. Unfortunately neither of these forms much of the learning curriculum in many primary schools in the UK. The focus of much primary education are the, is basic uh, literacy and numeracy skills which could be argued will be better served if they were delayed in favour of more arts and languages. As we heard, um, learning arts and language, arts and culture can improve attainment in maths, for example. So why are they not delayed in favour of learning arts, culture and language? I think basically <clears throat> society is too fixated on short-term goals. Pretty much everything is tested and measured and compared, one school against another, one area of the country against another. <clears throat> There's an expectation among politicians that all children reach a certain level of ability by the time they're 8 years old, 11 years old, with no thought for where that children is, where that child is, sorry, in his or her own personal development at those ages. When different schools or different areas of the country are seen to be lagging behind others in terms of test scores, there's uproar and lots of blaming of politicians, blaming of schools, blaming of teachers and of parents. Something must be done to improve the test scores. But test scores don't make us more or less intelligent. They mean you were well prepared for a test. Overall, I think if the state had less involvement in particularly early years education, I think everyone would be a lot better off. And if the state had less involvement, perhaps more language learning and more arts and culture would be taught in schools and not left to the parents to pay for as out of school activities and not something that every parent can afford to pay for. So, uh, rant over. Thank you very much.